Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to this June Solstice 2024 energy updates. And I'm going to be sharing here some insights and guidance that I was given through my Akasha guides about this June 2024 solstice season. They shared with me some general information about solstices, along with some specific information about this solstice, as well as some things that we can do to make the most of this time. And I will also be doing a quick oracle reading to support us at the solstice season. Um, before I go too much further, I also want to invite you to a free gathering of my Lightworkers Cafe membership group this week, which will be right on the solstice this Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You can attend by going down to the description box below and finding the link to my membership page. It's free to join. And all heart-centered spiritual seekers are welcome, and the event is free as well. Okay, so tuning into the Akash, I'm just going to share their message. And most of this video will be pretty much directly what I was given. So the solstice is a time out of time. It represents the stopping of time when the sun comes to a standstill. In the case of the summer solstice, it's standing at its apex. And this is a holy time because it's when the light is at its fullest. The sun is a person, it's a being literally of light, and he represents the self. The solstice is a ritual of nature that takes place twice a year in its polarity. So the sun demonstrates at the solstice through the law of polarity and also through the law of correspondence that life and death are but two sides of the same coin. The sun represents the eternal self in all its glory. And the sun at the peak of the year is the representation of the fulfillment of life. The autumn equinox represents that time of transition when the soul travels back to, to, into the unseen planes. The winter solstice, which we're experiencing right now in the southern hemisphere, represents the decision of the soul to return, as well as the gifts that a soul is given to help it in the lifetime it is about to embark on. And as well as the goals and challenges, the soul mission that it sets for itself before it arrives on, back on the earthly plane. And then the spring equinox represents the birth back into the world again, right? So the cycle of the year is also the cycle of life and death, and it tracks the soul's journey. But seen from the other side, it's kind of the opposite, right? Our physical lifetime represents the dark half of the cycle, right? So it's we have to really understand that it's all happening at once, right? And that light and dark are both working together for this whole experience. All right, so this June 2024 solstice is an apex, an apex of darkness, or at least it has that potential, which means a tipping point towards increasing light on the planet, potentially. Or on the other hand, it could be a tipping point towards increasing dark. That is a possibility as well. So remember that these things happen both at the same time. So this solstice, this June 2024 solstice season is an invitation to get real, to ask yourself, why am I doing this, right? Why am I here on this plane? Why did I come into physical being at this time, right? And it's a matter of choice how all this plays out on the physical plane right now at this time. If the sum of all collective choices on the planet tip the balance towards light, and I think they're talking specifically, especially about this next coming year, the rest of 2024, maybe the next couple of years, okay? Then for the rest of the natural physical lifetime of the, on this planet, Gaia or Earth will experience physical healing and restoration. If the sum of all collective choices tip the balance towards darkness, then the physical Earth from this point forward will go into steep decline. This is a pivotal point, okay? So either way, we are looking at a bifurcation, okay? So positively oriented souls, ascending souls, continuing are going to continue to get lighter and lighter. We are in a process called etherization, right? We're etherizing, which means that we're becoming more spiritual, Right. And um, so we are collectively, those of us on the ascension path, are creating an etherized earth and ascending with it. Okay. Negatively oriented souls, those who are still continuing on the 3D plane of existence and really drawn towards being material, 
And those are going to be continuing on the 3D plane of physicality, okay, either here on this earth or elsewhere. But depending on the collective choice that is made over the next few years, this can happen in a way that favors the dark or in a way that favors the light. So in other words, we are splitting. Some of us are ascending and becoming more and more spiritual until finally we will not need the body anymore. Others are staying down in this dense kind of um, plane in order to learn the lessons of that plane, okay? That's a given. The split is a given, right? But depending on the collective choice that is made over the next few years, this can happen in a way that either favors the dark or favors the light, okay? So ironically, many of those souls who favor the dark path of continued materialization do so out of a fear of death, not realizing that the victory of light at this point will actually prolong the physical existence of a living earth as it will continue to be imbued with life force as the process of etherization takes place. So this is a spiritual war. It's a war of territory with earth herself as the prize. And with this solstice, we enter the thick of the battle. Doubt not that you can influence the outcome of this battle. The lines of battle are drawn in our own minds and in our hearts. Each individual mind is a battleground, and here is where the war is waged. What happens on the outside is only a reflection and an unfolding of the mental frequencies that led up to this point. Okay, What we see right now is a result of past battles or past actions. Okay. We change the frequencies in the moment now, and you will begin to see over time the outside world change in response. So know that one, every choice makes a difference. Every choice in every thought, word, and action, you can choose to act or react positively or negatively. All choices add to the balance, right? So the more we can act and react in a positive way, the the more we're tipping the balance towards light. And each individual person, there's no one that's small here in spirit, right? Um, number two, never underestimate the power of prayer. The forces of darkness may, may be legion, but they are nothing compared to the forces of light. Tremendous spiritual reinforcements are yours if you will but ask. So number three, if the decision has already been made in the favor of light, what remains is only to act. Thought without action cannot materialize, right? So we're being encouraged to really move forward and act upon our guidance, right? Um, so a couple um, encouragements that they gave us. One is to be vigilant and feel for the vibration of an impulse or invitation before acting on it. There's a lot out there in social media, all these kind of bandwagons that we can get on or causes that we can jump on. But they're just saying for, for each little action, you know, do you go to this demonstration or not, right? Do you smile at somebody or not, right? Every little action, um, just feel into, does this feel right, like the right thing to do right now, okay? Um, act according to your true timing, right? A smaller action that's well-timed for you will do more good than taking sweeping action before you're ready or putting it off through a desire to make it perfect. Be humble. Realize that this is a collective undertaking, right? Be assured that your part is significant, but your ego may not recognize it as such, right? Still your mind, ask humbly for next steps and act as guided, okay? So finally, remember, remember that everything starts with vision. We are building new earth, okay? So firm up your vision for new earth and hold it clear and clean in your mind. And ask yourself, what does a world of love and harmony actually feel like? Imagine that and seek and hold that vibration. That needs to become our true north, right? The vibration and that vision. When we have that in place, then when we feel into what's the next step, it's almost like sights on a rifle, right? Where you can have that vision of your true north of, of, of new earth, that hugely beautiful high vibration, and that's your far sight, right? And then you're, the sight that you're um, looking to at the, at the close part of the scope, right, is 
um, you know, that's what you're feeling called to do individually, right? So when you line up your individual calling with that beautiful, huge vision of what we're building, right, over the next thousand, two thousand, three thousand years, um, this beautiful new earth that we're building together collectively, when you can line up that individual vision with the larger vision, then that's when you're going to start to get that really beautiful divine guidance. Okay, so I'm going to draw a card to support us for the solstice season. I am drawing from my spirit animal awareness deck. And uh, you can, if you want your own deck, I'm going to put the link to that in the description box. Um, just give me a sec to shuffle here. And I'm asking for highest and best guidance for the highest vibration of love on this earth. Um, and asking for... <laughs> asking for courage and fortitude for each one of us as we move forward into this next phase of our collective journey, um, asking for us to be open to direction from above for the highest truth and highest good of ourselves and Mother Earth and all of humanity and all of, all of cosmic consciousness, and asking that this all unfold with grace and ease and making it as blessed as possible, right? With the, the least amount of sorrow and loss as possible for us to get through this period of time um, for humanity, okay? And I love this card. This is what showed up. Um, the animal that's showing up to support us at the solstice is hummingbird. And what better, what better um, animal? Um, some of the, it, it's such a high frequency animal. So I had a hummingbird come up to me the other day and it was just like, it's always such a joy when one of these creatures comes in. And remember when we hold that high vibration, we have that effect on others around us, right? It's like we come into, if you've ever come into the presence of somebody who has a really high vibration, it's like, whoo, the whole, everything seems lighter. It's sort of like um, the sun came out, right? And but remember also that hummingbirds are highly territorial and that they will, um, per, you know, proactively go after anything that is impinging on their ter territory. So this is really a call to, you know, whatever it is that's that you're feeling guided to do, protect that, right? If you need time to do your work, protect your time, right? Or if um, you feel like there's, you know, anything that's negatively impinging, um, you know, don't feel like you have to tolerate things um, to, to please others, right? Um, sometimes we have to be unpopular for a while in order to really get through and claim our territory so that we can move into a higher vibrational state, all right? So Hummingbird gives us that courage and that fortitude as well as the super high vibration to do what we need to do and make the choices that we need to make at this June 2024 solstice season. So I hope you've enjoyed this energy update. Um, if you have, I'd love if you would share um, and comment and like this video because that will help it to reach more people. Have a wonderful, wonderful solstice season and, and remember you were born to be free.